All right, guys. Uh, <laughs> how's everybody feeling? I think um, it's been a little bit wild today because the entirety of everybody I interacted with today was following the election, which is typical if you are in the US, right? But I live in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and it is a big deal here as well. Um, I am, I can't say I'm shocked. I still have got um, a son in my left ear, so I'm listening a little bit to that. Um, I'm not really sure that I want to hear Donald Trump <laughs> gloating his brains out in a minute, but I thought I'd come on here and, I don't know, talk to you guys for a little bit. It's, um, yeah, I wish I could say that I was shocked. I'm not shocked. Um, I think that the Harris campaign really failed to delineate themselves as a separate entity from Biden. And we had a lot of really great momentum early on, right? Because we wanted something different. I wanted something different. I'm not a big fan of the Biden administration, and I'm not a big fan of all of the things that she ran on. But like that initial oomph that everybody felt and that initial incredible bump that we all saw happen when Biden decided not to run or was forced into not running and Harris took over was immediately squashed out by her consistent need to align with Biden policies. But we didn't want Biden policies. And now what we got is a second Trump presidency where he is now has a vengeance and needs to prove points as likely a narcissist or somebody with incredibly obvious narcissistic traits. We also have a Senate and a House that are likely to be in the same Republican run. And I was just actually looking at the SCOTUS makeup um, because I was just wondering, like, what's the long term on this, right? Um, and it's alarming, honestly. So of the uh, current makeup of the Supreme Court, we know that we already have three Trump appointed justices, right? And they're all quite young compared to the average age of the SCOTUS justices. And they are all quite extremist in comparison to the other SCOTUS justices. And we also have three Bush appointed justices, two Obama, one Biden. So we already have six justices that are Republican. Two of the Bush appointed, I think, are highly likely to step down because if you remember with the RBG uh, Rudolph Ginsburg debacle, when she refused to step down and just wanted to die out of the Supreme Court, instead, that's how he ended up getting to appoint these three to begin with, or one reason. And on top of that, we now have three, like Alito, I think is, Thomas is 76, Alito 74. I think it's highly likely in light of the Ruder Beth, Ruder Beth, <laughs> oh my God, I can't speak, Ginsburg dying out and everything that happened after that, I think it's highly likely that Alito and Thomas both step down and allow Trump to appoint two more Supreme Court justices. And obviously that doesn't change their political leaning, but they will be way younger and way more extremist and way more ideologue aligned. And this is a lifetime appointment, right? So then what we have almost certainly, like best case scenario from the SCOTUS, is three young SCOTUSes put in by Trump in his last administration, and two who are replacing Bush Republicans from this administration. If Thomas, sorry, not Thomas, um, if, um, my God, my brain is like barely functioning at the moment. Um, Chief Justice Roberts decides to either step down or, I don't know, die. Then that's another Republican that's replaced by a extreme Trump. And these, these are like, that's like best case scenario, right? Because at least one to three of them are going to do that. So we are going to get one to three more Trump SCOTUS justices, 100%. So he's going to have 
anywhere between four and six of the current Republicans being Trump appointed and young. If any of the fairly elderly Democratic appointees, two from Obama, I think, and one from Biden administrations, steps down or dies, like it is conceivable that 78% of the Supreme Court of the United States could be Trump appointed justices until I am in my 70s. I'm 38. It's embarrassing, honestly. Jess says that everyone needs to chill. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world (laughs) right now, but it is a big deal. This is a big deal. I mean, come on. We are not going to sit here and pretend that this isn't potentially a massive problem with regards to the othering that he's been doing, the mass deportations that he's threatening, the, I mean, these are baby steps to fascism. And he has a point to prove now. He is going to control the House, the Senate, the Supreme Court, and the presidency. It's just, this isn't, I'm sorry, I, I'm not, it's not the end of the world again, right now, but I do actually think this matters and I do actually think it's important. And I, hmm. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, everybody I run into here is mortified. Like they're, it is so embarrassing. People are just like, how, how could we have now in the United States elected a convicted felon to be the leader of the free world. A convicted felon who, you know what, in a lot of states, you can't even vote as a convicted felon. <laughs> like, newly convicted felons, until they served out their sentences, in a lot of states can't even vote. It's silly. It's just... Hmm. <sighs> And they just called Pennsylvania. So it's officially, officially over. We're aware that the people (laughs) used their right. So did I. Uh, That doesn't mean any of this isn't real. And that people aren't perfectly capable of voting against their own best interests or the best interests of people that they care about. I mean, I... And good for you for using your voice to vote. This absolutely could be the last election that we are ever allowed to vote in. Ha ha, very funny. You know, it's so, it's so ha ha funny. (laughs) No, Harris not addressing the party wasn't a good look. Harris's campaign was horrible. Her deciding to not break off from the Biden administration. Like I, I didn't like the Biden administration. I didn't like their policies. I didn't like their stance on most things, honestly, but she was writing out the I'm not Biden and we'll put Roe v. Wade back in and hoping that that would be the whole thing. I mean, this is truly, I, it's, I don't know what to tell you guys. I, you can, he's going to win popular vote too. Yeah. I mean, truly a historic election and I'm not, you know, we're not being insane. Like I'm not buying a ticket to go storm the Capitol and do a January 6th, right? I, it's, This is democracy, but I don't know how long it will be. (sighs) Yeah, I agree. She should have, um, she should have addressed everybody and she is the vice president, you know, it would be so easy for her to do a Donald Trump and just like refuse to certify the results and how fucking, sorry, how demeaning must it be to have to certify the election that you lost to Donald fascism Trump. Proof that they aren't ready for a woman in office. Yeah, I know. I was actually thinking about that today of how much uh, sexism and maybe even some internalized, like not obvious misogyny played in this. But at the end of the day, I truly think that 
her campaign was terribly run. Like you cannot see the initial bump in support and excitement that we got and go, oh, you know what? That looks like something that people are excited about. Change. And then instead of going, you know, taking a note from Obama's book and going the route of change and flair, you go like, yeah, we're just like Biden, except women. <laughs> it's silly. People here who don't follow American politics, which is most people, I mean, they peripherally do. They like big things, but I, I've had multiple people go like, wait, there's never been a female president in the U.S.? Like, no, it's unheard of in most developed nations. Joe Biden should have stepped down a long time ago, but Harris also should have run a campaign that wasn't Biden 2.0 in woman form. Massage no more. Yeah, I'm absolutely certain that played a role. 100%. But I also think she ran a shit campaign. She should have delineated herself from Biden. Oh, my best friend is here. Hi, Iowa. Say the F word, don't apologize. Thanks. Her campaign did suck. I mean, it was great at the beginning, right? Like, we were all super excited. It was so good at the beginning. But she just went, I'm Biden. Do you think the Trump administration could be a spark that lights the World War III? Yeah, <laughs> obviously it could. I don't know. Hopefully not, but... Yeah, abortion rhetoric doesn't matter in swing states because this they were I yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm not an analyst, I'm not a political commentator and I only know like the feelings that I was getting when I was watching her campaign and I was worried and I I thought this is too close for comfort. This is too similar to 2016, but surely not. Surely not. I feel if Sanders got the nomination in 2016, we wouldn't have had to deal with Trump. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Bernie Sanders could have beat Trump. I mean, I personally was much more aligned with Sanders, but. Do you see the progression of reproductive rights? It's, yeah, 100%. Yes. Why would it, like, House, Senate, presidency, and a vast majority of SCOTUS electorate, like, I mean, appointees, like, yeah, obviously it's going to be continued attacks on reproductive health care and health care in general. Like, we're not ever getting universal health care, guys, don't worry. And reproductive rights, for sure. Not just abortion, it's going to be more than that. There are clips of Bernie Sanders calling himself a socialist. Yeah, because he he because he is a socialist. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times I hear people make that criticism like that like that's socialism is not a bad word. Vance is terrifying. Yeah, he is, but Trump is a narcissist and has a point to prove now, so She didn't come across different. Yep. <laughs> Any chance the West Coast states secede? I'm not sure they even can, can they? I don't know how that works, but who, who knows? Huge implications in NATO, Ukraine, European trade. Yeah, I mean, U.S. politics affects everybody all around the world, right? All economies, all policy, everything is affected by U.S. policy and U.S. foreign policy, but also the general um, social stance that political parties take in the U.S. affects the trajectory of other um, nations as well.
Mm. Mm. I don't know. Don't know. I've just been trying to. It's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. The Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as um, being in charge of health policy is alarming as well. And honestly, probably played a massive role in swinging some fence sitting voters. Um, having a staunch anti vaccine conspiracy theorist who thinks that HIV is fake in charge of the CDC. If there's another pandemic, we are toast. Like, we barely made it out of the last one. CDC, FDA, USDA, yep, it is absolutely worrisome, 100%. U.S. is cooked. Oh, hello, my cousin. I love it when people I know show up in the chat. It makes me happy. Scared for the transgender community. Yep. And immigrants. I mean, come on. We've already been... He's been, like, completely othering everybody for the entire campaign. This is tiny baby steps to fascism. Like, I, I know it's not just me saying that, and I know a lot of people think that is extreme but i very much genuinely believe <laughs> that that is the trajectory of this like what follows mass deportation of immigrants what happens when mass deportation of immigrants becomes which is what he campaigned on right this isn't like crazy talk he's said i'm going to do this so what happens when that becomes too expensive I'll give you a hint. Not good things. Ugh. Genocide. Yep. I'll be right back. Don't leave. I'll be right back. Tell the chat that I'll be right back. All right. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah. So all of you who are still awake watching this, bless you. I'm not sure if I was in the States that I would be able to continue. Oh, hi, Sarah. I'm so happy when I see people I know that join. It makes me really happy. I don't, I don't know, there's like people I talk to every day and it still makes me happy. I'm in Australia. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I had a super long day of clinic and this is definitely not how I wanted to end my night. But you know what? I mean, we knew that it was a very close race. I did not expect it to be this kind of a landslide. And I respect that this is democracy for now. How do we move to New Zealand? Uh, I wish I could tell you that it's not easy. Highlands uh, makes me happy when I see people. Anyway. So today, all day, people are like, oh, I'm so, I bet you're so happy that you're in New Zealand. I bet, you know, and I mean, I guess part of me is, I'm like, I am happy that I am in New Zealand and I am happy that I can take care of my patients in the way that I need to here and that it's not 
the volatility and um, current state there. However, the rest of the world <laughs> tends to track along and follow us. I mean, this isn't like, one, it sucks to watch this from afar as well. Like I have friends and family who live there. I want to come back. And now it feels harder and harder to do that because I like I have an idea of what it's like to not have to exist under that kind of political volatility. But I also still like, I just like, I care about the state of American democracy and it's alarming. And, you know, I particularly the healthcare aspect obviously is my area that I talk most about and know most about, but like deporting immigrants as a campaign strategy and people thinking a great plan is insane. Like we need to address U.S. immigration, but the only difference between a legal immigrant and an illegal immigrant is paperwork. And these are our friends and families and neighbors, and they, they contribute to the U.S. economy and tax system. And like, it's like they're, they're people. I just, can't we address this from a standpoint of how do we ensure that people can, in a reasonable time frame, apply for immigration and come in the right way? Do it the right way. Do it the right way. Do it the right way. Just love. Yeah, do it the right way. Sure. Why don't you tell me how to do it the right way? Because I'll tell you something. It is really hard to immigrate to New Zealand. But if you are a poor Mexican and you want to come across the border because you're in danger and the cartels are destroying your town, doing it the right way, waiting potentially eight years more, who knows, if you can even figure out how to do that. <laughs> These people aren't just gallivanting across the border for funsies. They're they're humans trying to make a better life. Do you not think that they would come legally if that was at all conceivably possible? Like, why would you want to come illegal if you could apply and come illegally? Everybody, I mean, it's, yeah, people should come the right way. But the problem isn't that. The problem isn't people. The problem isn't trying to make a better life. The problem isn't Im immigration. The problem is we need better systems to allow people to immigrate if they want or need to. And we've like refugee status cannot keep being something that takes ages for people to apply and have because you like the inherent nature of being a refugee means you can't do that. Like I agree that immigration is an issue, but nobody wants to go somewhere and be undocumented, right? Hmm. Okay, I, I see people complaining. I'm not answering their questions. Like, I'm sorry, there's almost 500 people in here and I'm talking and also listening to the news because I want to see when Trump comes on and listen to the speech. I cannot possibly read every comment and I definitely can't respond to all of them, but I am trying. I'm sorry. It is not personal if I don't answer your question. Yep, yeah, hate the cartels, not the immigrants. Hate the policies, not the people. Okay, let's fix the policies, not punish people who are humans trying to do their best for the most part. Like most of these people are not most illegal drugs brought into the U S are brought in by U S citizens legally crossing the border. Of course the cartels are real in Mexico and you know who they're hiring <laughs> American citizens. <sighs> 
The people aren't following us and following the policies because the policies are outrageous and impossible to follow, particularly if your life is in danger. We should help vets and unhoused people, but we can do so much at the same time. Yeah, we should help vets and unhoused people a thousand percent. I agree with that one. I so agree with that. Um, National ban. You know, House, Senate, presidency, conceivably in a best case scenario, 75% of the Supreme Court justices. All Trump. And not just, this isn't 2016 Trump anymore, right? This is Trump with a vendetta. Trump who thinks he had the election stolen from him. Trump who has now had two public assassination attempts on his life. Trump who is still the same old reality TV narcissist that he always has been. This is alarming. I, it's, uh, it's, the election wasn't stolen, but democracy means people are allowed to, Vote for who they want. And I am allowed to say that I think a lot of people are voting for uh, someone who is going to be objectively in disagreement with their best interests. Yeah, so, so many people. I don't know if my, I haven't checked on my ballot status, but honestly, Texas, I did vote and I spent like a hundred US dollars to send it because it needed to get there within like eight days. And I don't know if it made it or not. At this point, it wouldn't have mattered. And I don't even want to look because it'll just piss me off if we spent all that money and the vote didn't even get there and get counted, so... Trump said that he will use the National Guard against people who support him. Yeah, I don't know what the exact quote was there, but he absolutely said there is an enemy within and we should use the U.S. military against them. That is, that is, <laughs> what? We're going to use the U.S. military against U.S. citizens because they disagree with us? That's psychotic. The fact that he's playing, or at least I know I'm free, we're clearly having a fascist. Yeah, I mean, if you look at measures of freedom, the U.S. ranks so low on, like, OECD nations and um, statistical measurements that look at freedom of the citizens. The U.S. is not the land of the free, guys. That, that is a common trope, but it is absolutely not true. I think it's, like... 20, 30, 40, way, way down on the list. Sounds bad. Everybody getting messed up by terrorists. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Um, yep, it is what it is. Yeah. Putin opens champagne. Um, I had such a long day at work. I have barely finished my work at like 6.30, almost 7, which is unusual here for my job here. Um, and I haven't even eaten, but I just want to hang out. Oh, he's speaking. I don't know if you guys want to listen to it or not, but if you're not listening to it, I'll convey the information to you. Oh my God, he's going to gloat so much. The man has never, ever understood or cared how to be a good loser or a winner who appropriately responds. It's so gross. Yes, I am in New Zealand still.
what is this? Historic societies know this as common sense, law and order. Be wary of those who desperately want to illegally cross into your country. Okay. Yeah. We just elected a convicted felon to run the country in a country where convicted felons in some states can't even vote. <laughs> That's silly. Don't be silly. You guys are funny. Endorsed by the KKK. Might start drinking to cope. No, don't do that. But I am. I wish it was. What is he? I would be a better president. Uh, no. No. I am too fragile. <laughs> When you guys are mean to me, I cry. So someone said and they're confused how this happened. I am not confused how this happened. This happened because the Harris campaign failed to delineate themselves versus um, Biden. We didn't want Biden, right? I knew I wasn't voting for Trump. But I didn't want Biden either. And then we got Harris and I thought, great, this is different. And for a little short time, we got this massive bump and lots of support. But then she was Biden 2.0. What are you supposed to do with that? I'm just listening and it's truly, Whew. yeah, so I'm not going to argue if abortion exceptions save lives or keep people from dying. We already know that's not true. I've been making that content for four or five years now and nobody cares. It feels a bit difficult to feel like you are doing anything worthwhile when this keeps happening, but what happens if GAPA flip when they finish counting ballots? Well, that would be unusual because we have lots of data. It's not just polling data and those preliminary results, right? We can compare it to previous elections. So it could happen, but it's really unlikely. Why is a felon allowed to run president? I don't know. A bit, bit unusual. Oh, please. People crying over this need to get a grip and do some history lessons. Uh, history. Decently versed there. Um, Regardless of the results, buck up, what the fuck. Um, I would like to call to your attention January 6, 2020. <laughs> that is adorable. I that, actually don't even have anything to say to that because it's just, it's like humorous in its own right. And it actually made me laugh. Abortion bans are dumb. Abortion is healthcare. You know what else is dumb? That it, predictably, there has been an increase in the number of abortions in states with abortion restrictions since Roe v. Wade was overturned. And I can postulate on why if you want to talk about that. Um, but you should know that. And I think people who vote for abortion restrictions should know that. Yep. Birth control hormones, all of those things are at risk. IVF particularly, I would expect to be the next thing that's at risk. Although a lot of this does revolve around needing to maintain the birth rate, right? Because we need taxpayers and we need people who will vote for 
extremists in the future, if we still are voting at that point, <laughs> joking, not joking. Um, so I don't know where IVF will land, but it is certainly at risk if we keep putting in personhood laws. That's the whole issue with that from a fertility standpoint. Why can't we get a woman in the White House? Yeah. Why is it that a convicted felon who is also a sex offender <laughs> is now twice won the presidency when running against a woman and once lost it when running against a decrepit old man? Don't know. Yeah, he's talking nonsense. Yeah, I like this speech is so uninspiring and it's it's neither rage bait, alarming, like make me throw up nor inspiring. Run to get an IUD replaced now. Hmm. Probably not the worst idea. Mm -mm -mm. J.D. Vance is talking now. <sighs> All right. So what happens when we have another pandemic and Robert F. Kennedy is in charge of the CDC? This man believes that vaccines are bad. HIV is not real. And many other medical focused conspiracies praised and quoted hitler endorsed by the kkk i don't know that i've ever seen rfk say he wants to ban vaccines but certainly being in charge of the cdc is going to be potentially problematic with regards to vaccines i'm not sure how that will play out i don't think like, Trump really likes taking credit for COVID vaccines. Um, and so I can't imagine he fully aligns on that side. So I'm not sure. Like, I I think RFK being endorsing Trump actually probably did have a significant impact on fence sitters for this election. But I'm not sure Trump actually likes him very much. And I, I think he didn't RFK actually call Trump, like, I think he spoke very poorly of Trump in the past. So I'm not sure how long RFK will stay um, in line. I used to love MDJ. I'm a mom, doctor, and libertarian. I have very liberal views on human rights and science, but I think national security and economy needs a Republican. That's great. I can't imagine why you would not like me personally because I disagree with you on policies, but if that is how you choose to live your life, I certainly cannot change that. And it's all right. I don't need you to like me. It's fine. My dad came to this country due to the Soviet occupation and got his citizenship the day we walked on the moon. He recently died of pancreatic cancer. I'm kind of glad he doesn't have to see this. I'm so sorry for your loss and yeah i think it's sad <sighs> putting economy over human rights is crazy to me but hey yeah i mean it's hard because economy does also affect human well-being but i agree i could never vote for someone who put individual human rights in jeopardy not for any reason <laughs> if you're a doctor and think america has strong national security your education failed i wonder how many people voted for trump because they liked rfk no i i think a lot honestly i i truly think rfk because he is quite moderate-ish on non-science issues, I think that people thought, well, I mean, what can a conspiracy theory-toting anti-vaccine crazy person do? 
I will still get my vaccines because there's not a lot of understanding about how much controlling those government entities can actually affect our day-to-day life. Like the general population doesn't understand that and they shouldn't have to. So if you liked his other policies and you're like indifferent and don't really think he can cause chaos with regards to the anti-science propaganda, maybe because you don't know his history and how much he was a backer of the Wakefield controversy and, you know, the whole um, autism and the MMR vaccine, thalidomide, not thalidomide, sorry, not thalidomide, autism and someone help me. What's the word I'm looking for? Whatever the preservative that the autism and MMR vaccine controversy was about that was, you know, scientifically shown to not be a, an actual issue, but was taken out anyway. Like you, I could see how somebody who could think that they liked his other policies and that might not matter that much would be swayed by it. And it's, I see it. That's the thing is like, I see it. I know how this happens. I know how people end up voting against their best interests. These people are not just crazy. These are my friends and family for a lot of them. And if you move out of the country and see the reactions of the rest of the world in real time, it's actually quite jarring. Um, once you're out of that and just watching from afar is a bit weird because there's not the same polarization here or other places. And there's not the same, certainly not the same split as far as like extremism. It happens and it is a thing here and it will now get worse everywhere else in the world because of this. But it is so weird to step out of that where politics is so polarizing and upending. And then we move into a country where there is still the same problems to an extent, but politics is not the polarizing. I can't be your friend or like trust you or uh, care about you anymore because of your political beliefs. It's not the same here. Like it's, it's not a part of your identity. Like in the U S we do identity politics, who I vote for, who I support, who I like, this is my identity. And that's a problem, right? Because then you are blindly attached to a party, a person, not policy. And it's just not the same here. The electoral college is crap. It wouldn't have mattered now because he's won the uh, popular vote, which honestly, good job. Republicans never win the popular vote. So he's doing something right. I think we know that. But jeez, I just like, my God. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm trying to, I'm still listening to this. Now he's talking up Elon Musk. So I think there's a really good chance we end up with an Elon Musk appointment into the uh cabinet <sighs> yeah okay i'll run for president in 2028 sure thanks i am absolutely qualified to be president of the united States. well honestly i guess if donald trump is qualified i probably am <laughs> we're all qualified to be president at this point it's a free for all. Look, this is, is this equality? Is this what we've all, have I been advocating for this all along? I wanted equality and now we do. Everybody's just qualified to be president. You just have to have a heartbeat and be a decrepit old white man. <laughs> I don't have more, um, qualifications in Trump this year because he was president for four years, but I, I like being a doctor and I also, uh, I'm fragile. And when you guys are just a little mean to me, I cry. So I could not ever do that. I would never be able to do that. 
Your cat's more qualified. Y'all are funny. Mm. Seeing you cry about this is hilarious. Raquel, I this is so fascinating to me because like it's cute, right? Like I'm I'm talking about human rights. I'm talking about concerns that I have with regards to you know, our ability to maintain I don't know, not having an anti-vaccine conspiracy therapist in charge of the CDC. I'm talking about things that matter. I'm clearly not crying. I also don't live in the US right now and will soon qualify to be a permanent resident of New Zealand if I want to be. So I don't really, other than caring about, as I discussed earlier, the people there and wanting to be able to come back at some point, have any reason to cry about this other than I'm genuinely worried about the status of human rights in the U.S. and how that trajectory in the U.S. affects the rest of the world. So when I see people say things like this, haha, it's so funny to see you crying about this. Like, I'm not doing an insurrection tomorrow, uh, but I am worried about human rights and I do care about immigrants. I do think that saying Haitians are eating cats and dogs is a dog whistle to fascism. Like, yeah, I'm, I care about people. And if you think that is ha ha hilarious, then I don't, I mean, that's, you know, not something I find ha ha hilarious, but I guess we're all entitled to have bad opinions. I just, like, if you want to come in here and say dumb shit, I, I mean, chat, be nice. Let's not attack people. Please do not, for the love of God, like, what I don't want is any of you to harass people. Do not do that. And especially not on my accord. But if you come in here and say silly things, like, haha, it's so funny to see you upset about this when I'm talking about how this will affect people that I care about and not me specifically. Like I am so completely removed from this, right? I could stay here forever if I want, assuming I get permanent residency, which I I think there's a decent chance I can if I apply for it. Like I could stay here forever and never have it affect me with regards to anything other than how it affects the trajectory of the rest of the world and how it affects my friends and family and people I care about and patients that I would be caring for if I went back there. Like to come in and say, ha ha, how funny you're crying. <laughs> like, can we, I actually saw a D'Angelo Wallace video about this the other day about how people just have started to take this approach to everything online of you're overreacting. Why are you so invested, bro? It's not that serious. Like it, it is, it is that serious. And some things are that serious. And this is not small. This is a, I'm not, oh my gosh, so sad. I love Harris and I am crying because she lost. I actually really didn't like many of her policies. I've been talking about this, I, I don't know, maybe this entire live stream. Um, but I care about people. Um, I, I can't read all of these comments and I appreciate you all leaving them. But if you have a question, I mean, you can put it in the question box and I can try to address it there, but it's also your right to be concerned about this just as much as someone who has the right to not be. So pointless to have people cry about you crying about it. Yeah, that is, that's true. That's kind of funny. Like, yeah, I don't care if people don't care. I'm not here like going, you have to care. I'm here going like, my God, here are all the problems that I see that will potentially be an issue. Not the least of which is the Supreme Court and the fact that we could conceivably have in a best case scenario, five of nine and potentially up to seven 
Supreme Court justices appointed by Donald Trump until I am 65. Ha ha, so funny. <laughs> Why should the country be required to take in immigrants if the citizens are struggling? Uh, this is a great question. And I'm going to assume that you're asking it from a standpoint of genuine wanting to discuss and not being facetious or whatever that last comment was that I addressed. Immigrants in the U.S., if you look at data from Homeland Security, et cetera, are less likely to commit crimes than natural born citizens, contribute to the US economy in massive ways, and objectively improve both the economy and the job situation in the US. They are not taking jobs from people like you have been told. This is not a matter of my opinion. It is data from, if you go look at the data and don't look at it presented from somebody who wants you to have an opinion one way or the other, this is fact. So we are not requiring anyone to take in anyone, and it is not at the expense of any U.S. citizen. I know that's not what you have been led to believe, but that is true. Now, do I think Open borders, everybody wants to come in, should just come in. That's insane, right? We've got to have a way to document people who live in the U.S. But wouldn't it make more sense to have a legal path to coming in for people who could contribute to the economy and well-being of the wider population of the U.S. than to let people just come across and never be documented? Or... To remove people who have lived most of their life in the U.S. because they were babies and their parents brought them across the border? Like, what, what? you know what happens after mass deportation? If you don't, please do have a read of Nazi Germany history. Mass deportations do not end well historically. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard the saying, but history does repeat itself. You shouldn't take these things lightly. It's not silly. It's it's real. Why not y'all crying ass bums calm down and cope in your room? I'm in my room. Unlike 2020, when all of you <laughs> were storming the Capitol and saying the election was stolen. <sighs> We can have two existences at once. This is not a stolen election. This is democracy. This is what the people voted for. And this has very serious and concerning consequences for not only the future of the U.S., but the rest of the world. reading a few of the comments. It always bothers me when we save these that we can't see the comments on the live stream that's saved. But um, I fear we're spalling into fascism. I, I've been saying that for the past year. This is concerning. And if you read about the history of how little tiny things lead to fascism, the othering that's happening in this administration is concerning. And the inaction by the other side, the Harris campaign's refusal to go, hey, when we start saying immigrants are stealing our pets and eating cats and dogs, this is a problematic thing to say and is another step into othering, especially when we're running a campaign on mass deportation. It is concerning. Our workforce would collapse without immigrants. That is absolutely true. Felons can't work at major companies, but apparently they can be president. Yep, they can't even vote in a lot of states. Ask Australia. We have a housing crisis because of immigrants and international students, according to some politicians. I don't know if... I, we have a housing crisis in the U.S., and it has nothing to do with immigrants. So, it's like... 
what time is it there? It is almost nine o'clock and I have not eaten lunch and I have not showered and I am exhausted, but I cannot stop talking to you guys and watching this. And also, this is so silly. I'm going to stop addressing the trolls, but cry bitches, Lamau. It's just like, mm, that's, I'm not upset about who's in power. I will once again say this minimally affects me, given that I am a U.S. citizen living abroad. Um, if that doesn't cue you in to the fact that there might actually be some problems that arise from this, it's willful ignorance at this point. Talking this out is a better coping mechanism than storming the Capitol. <laughs> yeah. Oh, remember when that happened? Should we do a January 6th, guys? Should I buy a flight and we can just go storm the Capitol together? That was effective, huh? Ethering and discrediting the media. Absolutely. The media is wrong. Only listen to me. It's 9 p.m. Um, media is wrong. Only listen to me. Your black and brown neighbors are out to get you. We're going to get rid of them. Don't worry. They're eating your cats and dogs. They're stealing your pets. Guys, it's... HIV is not real from the new probable director of the CDC, FDA, and USDA. How long before Vance is effective president? Immediately. Crying and coping in my room instead of storming the Capitol. <laughs> but, but we are fragile. RFK Jr. having anything to do with healthcare absolutely should alarm people. 100%. I'm disappointed in America as a non-American. I think that is a very common sentiment um, internationally. I haven't run into very many, uh, any people who have said anything other than, wow, this is a bit alarming. They work for, yeah, and undocumented immigrants are still contributing to taxes but not taking anything out they aren't qualifying for social security and things like that i mean it's like i don't understand like i think people think there's it's just <sighs> totally expected but still shocked uh yeah i'm not shocked i am disappointed All right, um, Instagram's gonna kick me off here shortly. Shall we come back or should I go eat dinner and go to bed? Do you still work in the US? No, I live in New Zealand. And I wanted to come back, but not now, not for a while. I'll get permanent residency here first. I, I will not leave in, unless forced out of New Zealand until I have permanent residency now. And that wasn't the plan. I just wanted to be here for a year, but. You guys enjoying this chat? Should I come back or do you want to go listen to other people? Come back. <laughs> Could you with your mouth open? Yes, yeah, so 100% will apply for a permanent residency. I don't know, guys. We have 400 people here. I kind of feel like I should come back. Enjoying the chat. Great. Okay, I'll come back. But when I come back, let's put some questions in the chat box and limit it to 30 minutes. And every actually, if you're here to be a troll, we're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> all right my friends i'll grab a snack and come back if there's a few of you who want to rejoin excellent if not please get some rest and you know what we just got to keep educating and caring about people all right um 
that was fun. We chatted a long time. I did not realize that. Well, actually, I did realize because I did a live stream yesterday or the day before. But I am sorely disappointed about the fact that when we stream on Instagram, it cuts us off automatically. Like, and what was it? An hour? Did I stream an hour? Well, I mean, that's reasonable. I probably shouldn't have streamed an hour. Did I stream an hour? Maybe it was only 30 minutes. I don't know. It is an hour. Yeah, they cut me off at an hour. But it seems like they should give us a little bit longer. But you know what? Who cares? Um, we're back again. We'll just save them in one hour segments. Uh, if you all would like to put a question in the chat, you can. I will not be promising to address any of them. This is just a debrief. Like, we've been debriefing. I'm not going to go eat and shower, please. I know, but really, just right now, I just need to talk to people. Um, the last discussion revolved around, like, why I thought my analysis as to what happened and how this happened uh, and some concerns that I have moving forward. And um, I, I just, I'm with all of you, but I don't actually have, like, I'm not confused about why did this happen? How did this happen? I think that's pretty clear to me. Um, but the, yeah, there's lots of people can, are, is people having any trouble hearing me? Um, the people saying like, I'm sad. Yeah. Like it, I, it makes sense. And please ignore the trolls who will try to pretend like it's not a big deal because there is a problem in this internet culture of it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. You're seething and crying, you know, go cope in your room. Like it is a big deal. This is a big deal. Um, U S presidential elections have always been incredibly impactful and consequential and this is potentially the most impactful election that we've ever had and i guess we say that every time we have an election but i i think this rings true more than anything right now is it confirmed he won it isn't yeah i mean he won if harris campaign went home didn't make a speech. He won. Um, <clears throat> were you able to mail in a vote from New Zealand? That's in the question box. Yes, I was. Uh, I spent, and I said this in the last stream, but I know all of you weren't here. I spent a hundred US dollars to mail it and try to get it there on time. And it should have been there on time. It was like, I don't know, nine days before the deadline. As of the last time I checked, 24 hours ago it was nowhere near being there and I don't want to check now because it wouldn't have made a difference and I don't want to know if I spent 100 US dollars and it didn't even get there yeah Pennsylvania was called about an hour and a half ago hour ago and yeah it's it's Jover New Zealand isn't gonna fit half the US population yeah absolutely Someone from Europe is flabbergasted. I would say that is the general consensus in most of the free world. If the data is postmarked before the deadline, it should still count. Yeah, not in Texas, unfortunately, unless you're in the military. Um, if it was guaranteed by a certain date, then as long as it gets there by the, like, the tomorrow at noon or something it'll count but otherwise it's not but it, listen like it it's a texas vote it is all but for show at this point guess you're staying in new zealand a little while longer 100 percent. i will be staying here until I have permanent residency for sure. I mean, I probably was regardless, but absolutely no shot. I would not do that now. Um, lucky to be in New Zealand right now. I agree with that. I'm very happy to be here. I love living here. I think it's a great place to live. Um, it's a bit of a weird it's weird being here while such impactful elections are happening at home. 
hang on, hang on. No, I'm not going to, I can't. Um, again, I will not tolerate harassment in my chat. So that is not why I pin these comments. I'm pinning it because I'm talking about it. This rhetoric is what is wrong with our country. If he won, let's move forward and accept that. I have not heard anyone saying he didn't actually win. The election was stolen. This is fraud. We won't concede. Let's storm the Capitol. How about an insurrection? Let's do a January 6th, right? There's not a problem with accepting that this is a win or accepting that people can, in my opinion, be coerced or confused into voting against their best interests. However, that is not the same as continuing to be incredibly concerned and continuing to critique an administration that has continuously over the course of this campaign and the previous election, but specifically this campaign, positioned itself to be completely against things that I think should be fundamental human rights, like not being told that your Haitian neighbors are stealing your pets and eating them, like not othering black and brown people and saying that we should mass deport them, like not doing the baby steps that Germany did before things that are now referred to as never again happened. We can still talk about those things and I will not let people come in here and pretend like critiquing problems with an administration is the same as doing an insurrection. That was not what happened today and it's not what's going to happen tomorrow. Are your kids aware of the election issues happening at home? What are you comfortable discussing with them? Um, yeah, I mean, they were watching the outcome of this. They have distinct memories of 2020 and discussing Trump. They've seen his videos here and there um, for the older ones. So, yeah, my six-year-old, probably not at all. Um, but the twins were watching today. I mean, all of the kids were watching the outcome of the election today. Um, and I'm fairly comfortable discussing pretty well anything with them. I've kind of positioned myself as a parent to just operate based on answering questions that they have. If they're old enough to be asking the question, they're old enough to be given an answer. It can be a win and still be devastating and terrifying. Yep. You are allowed to voice your dissatisfaction with person one. Absolutely, 100%, particularly when it goes against what I see as innate human values. Worried about my undocumented nephew. That's it, guys. Right? That's it. I'm worried about my undocumented nephew. Okay? These people who he has positioned as others are not others. They are your friends. They are your family members. They are the people you work with. In some cases, they are the people who work at the restaurant that you frequent. These are humans who are real people. And it's immigration is an issue that needs to be discussed, but mass deportation is an inhumanistic way to address that. Attack the policy, fix the policy, fix the problems with immigration. Don't attack human people who are family and friends. Oh my gosh, are you comparing Trump to Hitler? My friend, he has not only said that he thinks that he was a respectable person in a lot of regards, he has verbatim used quotes from Hitler when discussing immigration. 
Yes, I am comparing him to Hitler. And a refusal to even engage with that and look into the overlap and how the seeds of fascism are sown is willful ignorance. Just so you're aware, the illegals that Biden and Harris allowed in, again, not pending comments for you all to harass people, absolutely under no circumstances do I condone that. I am pinning it so I can read it while it doesn't go away and so you can see what I am addressing. More dangerous than Trump. Ignorance is quite funny. If y'all don't like it, get a passport and leave. We won't miss you. Here's the thing. (laughs) I have a passport and I left. Right. So I am quite removed from the situation, but I am still an American citizen and an American taxpayer. And I have concerns about this administration and the harm that it will cause. Taxpayer, citizen and voter. This is not ha ha he he funny. It's. And if we want to address this from a factual standpoint, the quote unquote illegals that Harrison Trump, Harrison Biden allowed in is factually inaccurate. One, I mean, we could get into the weeds on what's the difference between an illegal immigrant and a legal immigrant mm, paperwork and what makes paperwork unattainable, <laughs> the government. But if we want to talk about danger, that's not true. There is a prevailing theme that has been repeated by the Trump administration, but also by a lot of very extremist conservatives who are anti-immigration as a whole, that undocumented immigrants in the United States are dangerous. This is false. The undocumented population in the United States is significantly less likely to commit a crime than a documented immigrant or natural, well, specifically than a natural born citizen. If you look at the data from the Department of Homeland Security, this is just facts. This is not my opinion. It is true. Why? We can reason this in our brains, just with logic, right? Why would someone who is undocumented be less likely to commit a crime? That's it. They don't want to be moved back to wherever they came from. You are far more likely to be harmed by a convicted felon who is a U.S. citizen and president of the United States than an undocumented immigrant. Magnitudes. You know who's dangerous? Not all, but a lot of convicted felons. Is it bad to hope my fellow Latinos who voted for Trump get caught up on mass deportations? I'm not going to answer that question specifically, but it does absolutely perplex my little peon brain that people who are immigrants would support that. Yeah, where people's ans- white people's ancestors were low key all undocumented immigrants. It's like literally. We were all that. That is so true. Any chance the numbers come together in other states too close? No. Mm -mm. The swing states, I mean, once they called Pennsylvania, it was, it was over. Voted absentee in Pennsylvania. Grateful New Zealand's my home have moved away during Trump's first term. Guess I was too optimistic with higher hopes. Yep, I feel you. I had I, a little bit of optimism, but honestly, I wasn't shocked by today. Sad and fearful for Americans. Yep, I that is the prevailing sentiment um, abroad. People are confused and sad and a bit mortified that the U.S. has just elected a convicted felon who couldn't vote in a lot of states into the presidency. It 
is the silver lining that he can't run for a third term. I mean, no, he's got a vendetta. He's got a time frame to achieve it in. He needs to prove a point. He's a narcissist. Mm-mm. And then what? We can have a... Vance can run? I don't know. I don't really think that's a silver lining because it means he already served for four years and started this downward trajectory. How do you feel about him calling himself father of fertilization? I did not see that. Can somebody tell me where that quote comes from? Stay in New Zealand. Yeah, I mean, I was, I love it here. We wouldn't still be here if we didn't love it here. Um, But I don't like the fact that we're so far away from family. And I really, really want to have my kids closer to family. But I, we will not leave unless forced, which is unlikely, until we are permanent residents. Borders are a construct. Illegals of native descent are more American than, yeah, exactly. Um, What makes, yeah, yep, 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 yep. It's the same with like medical licensing. I can Practice medicine in Texas and take a step over the border and illegally be practicing medicine without a license in Oklahoma. It's a construct. It's a social construct. (sighs) If you are willing to travel through forests and multiple countries on foot, there is something horrible you are fleeing from. Absolutely, 100%. Can we please talk about the people who represent the rhetoric that is being spewed, please. No, the system's not broken. We need to move to popular vote from electoral vote. Mm. I mean, I agree the electoral college is trash, but, but he is slated to win the popular vote. It's, this was a fair election. I will just again state people can be coerced or confused into voting against their own best interest. Couldn't the Supreme Court change the rules so he can be president forever? Again, this is... I I hope that that's not the case, but currently in a best case scenario, there will be... Already there are three of nine Supreme Court justices who are... Trump ideologues who were appointed by him. All three of the current Republican SCOTUSes are old. Um, Thomas is 76, Alito is 74, and Roberts is 69, I think. And because of the Ruth Bader Ginsburg situation where she refused to step down until she literally died and then that meant Trump got to elect another SCOTUS and then that meant Roe v. Wade was overturned. There's an acute attention to the fact that that's a problem, right? So it is highly likely that two of the Bush appointees, maybe three, I don't think Roberts will step down in the Trump administration, but conceivably he could. I really think Thomas and Alito will which means then we will go from three, you know, those are all six Republicans, but we will go from three Trump Republicans to five Trump Republicans in a best case scenario. On top of that, if either of the two Obama appointed or the one Biden appointed decides to retire, which I don't think that they would, or dies, which they're all, they're not old, but they're not 40 then we would potentially then have six of nine justices Trump appointed, seven of nine Republican, and two, one from Obama administration, which was getting up there, and one from Biden. Now, when you add into that the fact that 
uh, Thomas has been, I think, I'm, I do not have the data in front of me. I'm literally just like standing in my bedroom talking off the cuff, but I am fairly certain that Thomas has been a justice of the Supreme Court longer than I've been alive, and I am 38. That means that there is a best case scenario that we end up with a minimum of five of nine Supreme Court justices being Trump appointed ideologues until I am like 65 or 70. I don't know, guys. That is alarming. You should be... You should be concerned about that. And that's before we even start talking about, like, the actual impact to humans, right? So when people are coming in here and going, oh, cope, seethe, blah, can't you just accept it? Like, I'm not... We are very clear and all on the same page that this was a fair election that nobody was stealing it and we're not storming the Capitol tomorrow, right? That does not mean that we stop critiquing the actual human problems that the administration will cause and how much it will absolutely harm people, not just in the U.S., not just immigrants, but around the world, because there is trajectory for all world politics to, in some regards, follow the U.S. lead. Um, maybe we should start alleging voter fraud and saying it was stolen. I mean... I'll premise this by saying I'm totally joking. That is crazy. But Harris is the vice president. (laughs) She could refuse to certify the election results. And I will once again say, how mortifying must it be to have to be the person in charge of certifying election results for the presidential election that you lost to Donald J. Felon fascism Trump? Somebody please pray for Harris tonight because... I couldn't do it, not with a straight face and not with a happy heart. Um, Yeah, I disagree with that a little bit. Need to see the high road, see the example, take the high road, blah, blah, blah. Well, that setting example is never going to help with making that happen um, in extremist communities. I'm not, setting a example is not not doing an insurrection. It's agreeing this is democracy, conceding to the loss, and firmly stating we have to keep democracy because House, Senate, Presidency, and majority of SCOTUS being Trump-led is a very real threat to the fabric and makeup of democracy. So we're not setting an example when we shouldn't be. And we are not going to be quiet or pretend like it's no big deal because it is. But yeah, don't do an insurrection, guys. Just read through a few of these comments long-term impacts absolutely lifetime impacts i mean we already had that right with the initial scotus makeup and overturn of roe v wade but there is i mean decades this is not just like nothing right this is impacts for our lifetime Peaceful transfer of power, absolutely, and it should be nothing else. 
And I fully suspect she will do that with a smile on her face despite wanting to die inside, knowing what this means for the individual humans of the U.S. She really fumbled the ball. Anyone who can't see this is blind. I'm going to pin this. And again, no, please, we're not harassing people in my chat. That's not how this is going to go because I am fully confident that this is a genuine statement and one I 100% agree with. Fumbled. We saw the Harris campaign receive support and momentum we have not seen since the original Obama campaign, right? We saw that. And why did that happen? Because none of us wanted Biden and his administration in play. Like, that's not what we wanted. And instead of the Harris campaign, they were up against a tough challenge, right? They had to put together a campaign in a mere day, few days, weeks, max, things that people spend years putting together. But... Instead of going, I see this momentum, and I think it's because people don't like the current administration and their policies, and we should go the way of Obama flair and change. She went, "Mm, look at all our support. I'm Biden 2.0. Fumble. 100% fumble. I fully agree with that. Does this mean no woman will ever be a president? I don't know, but I do think it is worth taking note of the fact that twice the Democrats have now put a female in the running. Obviously, Clinton had her own set of issues and Harris as well. And both those times has been against Donald Trump. He lost to a decrepit old white man with questionable capacity to function as a leader of the free world at best. And then one, twice, two women. I do not think Harris lost this campaign purely because she is a woman, but I do think that absolutely came into play. Yeah, that's the thing. So, I don't want to leave. This is my home. Exactly. I am so tired of people saying, if you don't like it, just leave. I did leave and I love it in New Zealand, but I miss my family. I miss my home. I love it here and I don't want to leave, but I fully understand why people wouldn't want to. And that's inconceivable for a vast majority of everybody who lives there. It's expensive. It's unattainable for the most part. You have to have a, if you want to go somewhere like Europe or New Zealand and live there permanently, you really have to have some kind of skill set that puts you into a upper echelon of what they need. It is not like you just go, yep, actually hate it here. Let's leave tomorrow. It is so expensive. It is so difficult. You have to have lots of luck and qualifications it's like that's so silly it is not that easy to just leave that's exactly right and also why i have so much compassion for people who walk across the deserts in mexico at risk of being murdered by cartels to get across the border because they want to make a better life for their family just Oh my gosh, can we please just, when we're thinking about these policies, can we just talk about how there's people? These are people, and they're not just dumb people we don't like, right? They're our friends and family and neighbors and coworkers. (sighs) And don't get me wrong, immigration is an important topic. I just really hate the framing that people try to take with it. Um, 
yeah, it's awful either way is true, but it is not equally awful. And I don't think running a campaign on lesser of the two evils was a smart thing for Harris to do, but it is certainly a truth in an overall harm reduction standpoint. Like, I mean, I'd rather Bernie Sanders be president than Harris, but if we're comparing a convicted felon and sex offender to the former eternal attorney general of California. I mean, I think it's pretty clear who's more qualified, but worried about my son's safety in school. Yeah. I mean, gun control is an issue. I don't know that I actually am fairly certain that that wouldn't have been addressed in any like change making capacity by either campaign. So that's not really, I don't know that there's really a way to make real gun control change in the U S at this point, but it makes sense that that would be something people are concerned about. And yeah, that I am too. If we came back, she marketed herself as Biden 2.0. Yep. A hundred percent. And that was so stupid. None of us wanted Biden. <laughs> like, when has the Democratic Party ever uh, done what the people wanted? And the people were like, please, please, let's not run Biden. And it wasn't just because he was an incompetent elderly man. It's because we didn't like him or his policies. We didn't want him in younger woman form. We, we wanted change. We wanted flair. We wanted like real policies that we wanted to see played out as progressive towards human values. Summarize how this affects our daughters. I think summarizing how this affects our daughters is really summed up by what I was talking about earlier with the Supreme Court, right? So we've already seen how significantly the Supreme Court changes um, affected our daily life. When you have extremists in charge of the Supreme Court, and it will be probably 66 to 78% Trump appointed Supreme Court for the entirety of the rest of my non dementia life. What we're going to see is the first time in modern history where our daughters have less rights than we had. And it will not be a one-off. It will be a slow continuation of the trajectory we've already seen and started. It's not pretty much over, guys. It is over. There's This isn't 2020 where we're going to wake up tomorrow and things will be different. The margins are not what they were then. This is this is not, it's over. Once they called Pennsylvania, it was over. She needed the blue wall. And even that was going to be a tough path, but it's not happening now. There's talks that he'll turn over the two-term rule. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. I mean, it depends how many people are... On board, you know, I think there is some pushback in the GOP against Trump. They're not all Trump supporters, but Senate, House, Presidency, and SCOTUS, absolutely he could do that. Like, yes, 100%. Remember when we were in like sixth, seventh grade and we were learning about U.S. politics and stuff? What did we learn about? You've got executive branch, legislative branch. And my mind's blanking. I don't know what the other big word branch is. Three branches, checks and balances. They represent House, Senate, Presidency, and Supreme Court. These are supposed to represent, say it with me, checks and balances. But you can't check and balance a stacked House, Senate, Presidency, and SCOTUS. And the SCOTUS is stacked indefinitely already, but now will be very much 
like for the foreseeable future of U.S. politics while we are alive. They control every check and balance. Executive, legislative, judicial. There you go. I don't know which one I forgot, but that's it. Restructuring the Democratic Party. (laughs) The Democratic Party is basically now for at least my adult life been running on. We're not the Republicans, which is crazy, right? Because a lot of us, especially in like my generation, you know, old to middle-aged millennials and younger are very, very socially progressive in that we would really like almost every policy, at least I would really like almost every policy to be viewed under a lens of how does this affect individual people in day-to-day life? And that is how I frame most of my views in everything. How can we look at this, how it would infect individuals? On top of that, we definitely have to look at how it affects the broader electorate and the population of the country in general. But I prefer to take a first lens of how does this affect individual people, people I love, people I care about, even people I disagree with but still love and care about, even some of you that I disagree with and actually don't really know at all but still care about because I think you deserve to have a house that you live in and not spend your whole life working and then end up with no retirement savings because I think you deserve to be able to own a house and not be paying rent for the rest of your life because I think you deserve to have health care and not have to go into medical bankruptcy, which is the most common cause, I believe, if not in the top two or three of, I think it's the most common in the U.S., something that is effectively unheard of in other countries. This is what the government is for. They are supposed to keep the citizens from having to do that. It's just... How can a convict not vote but can run the country? And in some places, felons can vote. And I actually do believe that convicted felons and even people who are in prison should be able to vote. We, we don't give up our right to participate in democracy because we make bad decisions. I I truly believe that, but it is alarming to me that you could be a convicted felon, particularly in the things that have been both alleged and confirmed with regards to him, and still be given the keys to foreign policy and nukes buttons. Like, he didn't just, like, commit a felony. These are big deals. Are you allowed to buy a house in New Zealand or do you have to be a resident? Uh, You have to have a residency visa to purchase a house here. Uh, I've had that for quite a while now, but I'm still a renter here. But it is, there is a process to being able to purchase a house here. And there's a, um, there is a housing crisis here for sure. Hey, we went to college together. Thoughts on moving to New Zealand as a nurse. Um, first off, can you tell me your name? Do I know you or did we just like go to AM at the same time? And second, I think that we very much need nurses and just look on the essential skills immigration list if you're interested. And I mean, it's not easy to immigrate here, but if you have an essential skills need, then you can. It's expensive and difficult, and I will say there are some things I very much miss about living in the States, and a lot of that is my friends and family, but that's not the only thing for sure. Do you have to pay tax in the U.S. and New Zealand? (laughs) Yes, I am bleeding taxes to the United States. Bleeding. But I don't have a problem paying New Zealand taxes because I can see the impact. Like my patients come in and they get free healthcare, right? Not free, tax paid healthcare. I do take issue, especially right now, with how much tax I pay in the States because I'm like, where is it going? What am I paying for? Um, I don't really like paying taxes unless I can see that it's benefiting the people who live there. 
I don't even need it to benefit me necessarily, but I just have a really hard time seeing like what that is doing for the U.S. Like I don't want to pay for the military to send drones into various Middle Eastern countries. That's not really what I want to do. I want to make sure that people where I am from can get health care and that we can, you know, fight back against climate change so that maybe we won't all be drowning underwater in the next decade to century. I don't know. Call me crazy. I just want my taxes to do good things, not kill people. Uh, U.S. taxes are paying for the military. Yeah, I mean, a significant portion are definitely going to the military-industrial complex. All right, guys, it's 9.45 here. I still haven't had dinner or showered, and... This is good, though. I am happy that we had this chat. It felt good to have a little debrief. I'm sure that a lot of you are feeling quite disheartened and not throwing temper tantrums or storming capitals or doing insurrections or plotting January 6th. Um, I know that you're not doing that. Um, but I understand that this is... It feels heavy and it is really fucking awful to feel this heavily, especially if you are someone who is invested in policies because you believe in human rights and approach things as I do from a humanistic stance. And I understand how that feels so heavy, particularly when you have people coming in and yelling at you to stop crying, cope, you know, you're just a big old crybaby, whatever, haha, ha, it's so funny to see you seethe and cry and like, it's, that is so immature and it is incredibly infuriating when you're coming at these things from a policy standpoint and a standpoint of really just genuinely wanting to have policies and taxes and governments that benefit people because my base belief is that the government should exist to make the lives of the citizens improved, not harder. And it is so hard for me to understand how we have gotten to a point where it feels like that's not the goal of a majority of people. Um, but I'm glad that we could debrief and have this chat and I, you know, it gives me hope that at least we could talk about it and discuss it. I can't change the outcome of the election and it's valid to feel however you feel, even if you're a Trump voter and you are so thrilled that he won. But that's not going to stop me from thinking that the vast majority of everybody who has voted for him has been either coerced or confused into voting for someone who will inevitably and in state policies that make their life, and if not their life, the lives of their friends and family more difficult and less fulfilled. But it's just an opinion. Anyway, the government should exist to make the citizens' lives better, not worse. And that's the takeaway. Trump on the popular vote, what's your takeaway? People like him. People are fully capable of voting against their best interests, in my opinion, and can be coerced or confused into voting for things that end up harming them and the people they love. That's... And I don't say that from a standpoint of being like, oh, look at me. I know all of these things. I, that's not how I feel at all. I just, I just think that when I view policy through a human lens and an individual human impact stance, it's 
difficult to come to any other conclusion. And I think that, I think it's important that we understand how this happens (laughs) because people need to belong. They need to have a sense of community and they need to feel like they're aligned on something. And I get that. And I think that the Democratic Party does a shit job of doing that. Voter suppression over decades, absolutely. But, I mean, we can't even talk electoral college at this point, right? Electoral college is crap. But if he wins a popular vote, that is history making. Not in the way I want to see history made, but it is. So, yeah, um... People want to align and they want to, there's so much left in fighting, you know, it's never enough, right? You can see it if you go to my own videos, people who ideologically and politically agree with me will be so incredibly critical of everything I say if it comes to politics, because it's not enough to just agree. We've got to be perfect. We have to stop criticizing people. It makes people absolutely unable to come from the other side to this side and feel safe and comfortable to participate. You have to be allowed to be imperfect because you don't go from being in an ideologue community with extremist views to feeling like, yeah, I can dip my toes into this humanistic perspective, I can start viewing policy through the lens of humanism. If you are utterly terrified by looking around and seeing everybody on that side attacking the people who are talking about things, like if you are absolutely terrified that you'll say or do the wrong thing and be pushed out of this new community that you might've just wanted to like dip your toes in and learn about, why would you leave? You're accepted there. You don't have to be perfect or even near perfect on the policies to be embraced. And we have to stop making people like the rights embrace this like cancel culture is terrible side, right? Yes, it is. And we have to stop making people feel like if they, you know, like I am so very much um, passionate about gender inclusivity, particularly in my field, but we cannot approach that from a standpoint of expecting people to be perfect, right? We can approach it from a standpoint of explaining to people why it's important and how it makes a difference. But when we start doing what we always do, you see it in my comments, you will see it in my comments. If I even like, if I even accidentally, you know, revert back to using really gendered language, even when I want to be inclusive, people attack. And that is, you know, on one hand, we got to be able to get constructive criticism. But when people see that, they go, holy shit, I can't do that until I'm completely perfect. I'll never be able to do that. And they can't come and join you because they don't feel safe to do that. And, you know, I mean, I guess it's kind of the little liberal trope of safe spaces, right? We're not very good at that. (laughs) Like, I want to make everybody feel included. And that is not limited to just people that are in populations that need to be included because they are marginalized. It is more important to me for that to be my focus. But I think even for myself, I need to focus on How do we make sure that when people start feeling marginalized from the scary things that we are now seeing unfold and the administrations that we are now seeing come into play, how do we make sure when that happens, they feel comfortable exploring policy through a human lens? And we are responsible for that. Well, hang on. I'm not. mm, No, actually, don't do that. We cannot let the Democratic Party position this as our voter base didn't vote hard enough. Our voter base isn't passionate enough. Our voter base doesn't care enough. The Democratic Party is responsible for this. 
I don't align with a lot of policies in the Democratic Party. However, what I do know to be true is they are going, you are going to see it. It's going to start. It's probably already started. I know it's already started. The Democratic Party is going to start saying, these voters didn't come out enough. These voters didn't do enough. You didn't campaign enough. You didn't fundraise enough. No, no. The Democratic Party failed to delineate themselves as different from Biden, whose policies we did not like, with their new candidate. And that failed to maintain the momentum that they had by initially altering who we were voting for or against. So all of that to say, over the next four years, it is going to be so incredibly important for us to pave a path for people to leave whatever that is over there that is keeping them there and feel safe coming here to explore policy from a human standpoint in a safe realm. We cannot force people to be perfect or fully educated on all of the topics that we're passionate about while also acknowledging that that often means we're ignoring topics that, you know, even myself, 100%, that we are not fully educated about. Like I ignore a lot of those. And sometimes I'm even afraid to like talk about them because I don't know what kind of feedback I will get. So we can't let that continue to be our takeaway of how we operate. People have to be able to come, feel it out, go, not be attacked, come back, feel it out, see how it goes. You have to let people explore without feeling like, if I do that, I'm going to be attacked. So that's my two cents. Thank you for listening. That was very fun. <clears throat> I don't know why 500 people would be here now, 300 listening to me on such a critical point in U.S. history. But thank you. I feel like this not short debrief was helpful to me. Talking this out helps me understand where I'm at with things. And I am, I always appreciate the input that you all give me. So thanks for being here. I'll try to keep doing this some. Um, wishing you all the best. And I hope that we can just keep moving forward and think about the people on the other side of the policies. All right. Good night, guys. <laughs>